what is up everybody welcome to saturday i hope you like this uh this day and time a bit better i uh, i definitely like it a little bit better my fridays are a little bit less stressful and my saturdays i get a little bit more time to prep the slides and get set up so you're joining me on the ham radio crash course here i'm glad you could do so thanks so much for coming out i uh, got a good number of people already waiting in the wings to just jump on and so that's a lot of fun thank you for waiting with us and uh, we'll get started here soon but i wanted to show off my new memes that's one of my favorites right there the breakfast club i think that's hilarious it's perfect those the, the bands i don't know what bands had an emotion it would be that picture Youngstown, Ohio in the house. What's up? Good evening, Sean. Uh, right on. Somebody says, P.S. I love your shoes. I don't know if that was to me. Who needs to go out and party on a Saturday night when we can watch the live stream instead? Well, if you're on the West Coast, it's only 5 o'clock here. Even on the East Coast, that's only 8 o'clock. you got plenty of times you can get other things going on. There's a new one. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's just wonderful. Look at Let me just put some screws in there and... Wire them right up. There's a uh, aptly tied uh, Baofeng coronavirus memes. Hot, hot memes coming in. Oh, that's twice because it's so good. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about logging. Oh, there's there's my new favorite. That is my new favorite. Don Riley got a VE badge today. Fantastic. Scott says he's finally making it to a live stream. That's awesome. So hopefully the new time works for everybody. Hello in not-so-sunny Orlando. I don't even know if that's possible. Right now, it is 79 degrees <laughs> where I live. So I am quite, uh, it's quite nice. Very, very nice. So today, we're talking about logging. And we're going to kind of deconstruct it down to the beginning and work our way up kind of what I do, work through my uh, workflow. And this should apply to just about any other app that you could possibly want to use. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, oh, man, it's raining in Florida. Wow. Uh, sorry, what is that? No, no, it's raining in Florida. 73 in Gardendale, Alabama. Wow, very, very good. Uh, Ian says, finally get to see you live. Been binge watching this channel for a while. That's awesome. And let's see, greetings from Nordic Native America in Nagoya, uh, Japan. Wow, very cool. Oh, we got Phil. He came over from Callum Stream. See, this is perfect because you've got Dave streams in the morning, and then you've got me. You know what? We'll flop it over. That's enough uh, Enough hot memes. And I think we restarted the, the timer on the, uh, the song. We can go and end that, too. Hey, guys. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks for hopping in here. And, uh, yeah, today, Saturdays, are now great, I think, because you got Dave and you got Callum, and they all stream. And so, you know, you can get a whole lot of ham radio in one day, which is pretty cool. Uh, Keith says, I'd rather have rain than the blasted snow we're having here. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I can't can't really say anything on that other than I have to drive if I want to experience the snow. Uh, today I'll be just drinking a, I think it's like a pale ale. It's okay. It's out of the hopsy. Um, not their best pale ale or IPA by any definition, but pretty good. Travis, I'll be finally taking my tech cert test this week. Long time no watch, but I'll be around much more from Houston, Texas area. Right on. So this month is uh, going to be absolutely insane for me on uh, both a work level and a YouTube level. Um, I'm doing a hack chat. Uh, the link's for this in the description. There should be. Anyway, I'll be doing a hack chat on uh, Hack-A-Day on Wednesday at noon Pacific Standard Time. And that's basically like an ask me anything, but of the hack a day variety. So I'll be taking questions and answering people on kind of like um, keeping ham radio relevant is the topic. And then I will be activating, as I mentioned last week, the um, Last Man Standing set, which will be the following week. And then I'll be doing a podcast and then I'll be hopping on a plane and I'm gonna be doing another collab with a different YouTube channel although I have been in talks with the Modern Road guys to hopefully get back out there. Uh, my shirt says legal under part 97. This is a, uh, what was it? Um, oh boy, I'm just blanking on it. Um, I think it's in the description. I will think of, I will think of it and then I'll come back. Uh, it's 7 3. Oh boy, somebody will come up with it. Um, what is it? Oh, I'm going to totally space on that one <laughs> Baofeng band shirt 
Thanks for doing the general test series before I um, couldn't, what was it? Before I couldn't pass a single practice test. Now I pass every time, just waiting for the 3rd of March to take my test. That's fantastic. Great job. Congratulations on that. Um, uh, Paramount asks, how did I study for my extra? I'm in the middle of studying. I use the fast track and the no nonsense uh, extra material. And I believe it was the no nonsense book and the fast track audiobook. And I just listen. I'm in traffic a lot during the week. So I just listen to the audiobook on my way to work. There's hours and hours and hours of content audio. Um, I started listening at 100%, and then I would bump it to like 1.25 speed as I was getting more familiar with the questions. And so, yeah, it worked out really well. And uh, I, I feel like I got an easier test. I know people have talked about that in the past. I feel like I got a, a kind of an easier test. Um, I don't know. They're all – those tests are decided by the VEs. But, yeah, I, I missed seven in, in full transparency. Michael Leo, thank you for the, the good comment there. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Uh, you know, we started things off a little a little talky-talky, and sometimes that's fun. Uh, by the way, if you could, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up. That would mean a lot to me. But uh, that's it, part97.com. I was thinking of, like, I wanted to go to 73 because I was wearing the part97 shirt. But anyway, part97.com, uh, that's where you want to go. Uh, they did. We did uh, a sale with them. Um, I should reach out and see if there's a coupon we might be able to put together. But uh, very cool stuff. I like the Run SSB shirt. It's like Run DMC, the logo, but Run SSB. So yeah. All right. So we're talking about logging. Logging is um, the way that we track, record our contacts. And why don't we just jump right over to the slides? So we're going to be talking about kind of, uh, like I said, breaking things down from the point of view of kind of where things began with logging, uh, why we had to do things that way, why we did this, that, and the other, and, and we're going to walk all through that. So buckle up. There's a lot of questions. And by the way, this is a patron's picks episode. First episode of every month, the patrons pick uh, which topic we'll be discussing, and then I will go to them for specific questions they have that they want to get answered or just curiosities. And so it's a semi-democratic uh, <laughs> process. I post up a bunch of topics and they vote for which ones they're the most interested in. And this was the one that won, interestingly. Now, I do have other videos on, and other live streams on logging, going into some of the applications, specifically Ham Radio Deluxe and N3FJP. And I posted the link in the description. I also have done a video on QSL cards, making your own QSL cards, how one goes about using them, uh, working with the bureau or the borough, depending on uh, how you refer to it. But anyway, so why do we log, log our contacts or our QSOs? So back before the computer and the internet, anybody could just say, hey, I made 10,000 uh, QSOs. I've made 10,000 contacts. And you got a way, you got to have a way to prove that, right? Well, again, back before the internet and, and computers and all that stuff, you used QSL cards. And QSL cards are those little posted post card <laughs> size pieces of paper that have a logo or a, or a picture in the front, usually with the person's call sign. And on the back side, it has details of the contact that the two individuals worked. And the reason for that is that you exchange them and they match. And so you have a two-party the two parties involved confirmation that the radio contact was as they said it was. And so that's that's how it worked, right? So people would collect all these QSL cards and they would use that as evidence, their proof that they made those contacts. And there's a lot of really or were or still are sought after contacts that people wanted proof for. And so they would have these QSL cards. So for example, I work the Sultan of Brunei. So there are... Um, yeah, there's a lot of QSL cards out there that are collected that are very interesting to to look at. A lot of them are very, very fun. And, and again, that QSL video I did, I show what I think are some pretty interesting QSL cards. So if you're interested in that, maybe check that out after this video. By the way, after this video, we'll be going over to Discord like we always do. So if you haven't checked out our Discord before, um, perhaps you'll join us over there. Basically, it is a live chat room with a voice chat. And we take questions, comments, um, anything that people want to bring up in the topic, any topic really. Um, we usually start out ham radio related and then it kind of devolves from there a bit. But anyway, so what are the parts of a contact or the parts of a QSL card that you'd write down or a QSO? 
any of that stuff you want to track. Um, basically, you need the date, the time in UTC, the frequency that the contact was made on. So if you're on 20 meters, it's 14 megahertz and some change. And then the mode of operation, so single sideband, AM, right, whatever your radio mode of transport uh, conversation uh, was. The station that was worked, the call sign, obviously that station. And then there's a reporting system, which is RST, and that's uh, readability, signal strength, and tone. And the tone portion you drop off if it's uh, single sideband, if it's voice. If it's just voice, you just need the readability and the signal strength. Now, readability is like a one through five scale, five being the highest readability. It sounds very good. Sounds like they could be in the room next to you or maybe talking to you over a phone, possibly. And then signal strength is pretty easy. It's the S meter strength on your radio. So if it's if your radio is pegged and it says S9 or S9 plus, you could put the S9 plus 10 or 20 or 40 or whatever, but really you only need the 9, the 5-9, right? So 5 for tone and the 9. A lot of people use 5-9 these days uh, for contesting and stuff like that, but you don't have to. You can be accurate with the contact just so long as the other party knows that that's the report that they're getting. Uh, Matt Truland, uh, thank you so much uh, for put that on the uh, QSL card uh, fund. So I appreciate that. W1YCZ. Uh, my party light is stuck on. That's kind of weird. Hold on. I got to turn that off. That's going to be way too distracting. Okay. <laughs> I should probably put the party light back in the show, but I don't really need to at this point. All right. <clears throat> so and then there's a field for like comments and some other things. Again, I, I go into more detail on that QSL card video. But if you're interested, um, that's kind of the brief idea of what they're for. And I did it again because I was on the chat room. Bloop. So one of the questions from the patrons was, do you log VHF, UHF contacts? And the answer is it depends. Let's talk about it a little bit. So what kind of contacts do you generally log? So aside from like informal rag chews um, or contacts that are on repeaters, it's acceptable to log any kind of contact. And even at the rag chew level, it's totally fine to log those contacts too. You just want to make sure all the parties involved know that, yeah, you, you want to make it a more of a formal contact for your logs or that you might send a QSL card. So it, it really just depends on what your goals are for that particular contact, right? Again, a rag chew is where just a bunch of people on the same frequency, kind of talking for a little while, throwing it to the next person, talking for a little while, throwing it to the next person. So that's all a rag chew really is. For everything else, like if you're on the band calling CQ, if you're on 20 meters calling CQ, then you probably would want to log that contact. Most contacts on HF, I log. Um, however, on the VHF side, I don't log a lot of those contacts. I'm on 146.520 every day to and from work. I talk to people to and from work. And the only contacts I really log on 146.520 is uh, for SOTA activation, summits on the air. And that's both when I am the one on the mountaintop activating and when I'm on the ground chasing the people that are on the mountaintops wishing I was there. So yeah, you would log those. You don't log things uh, that are said on or contacts on a repeater. You can, however, go on a repeater and say, hey, I want to check out this radio, this antenna, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is there anybody that's, you know, 10 miles from me? And here's my home QTH. Could we hop to a simplex frequency and see if we can make a call? You can totally do that. And then you could log that if you wanted to. So that FYI. Another question. These, okay, so this is really good. We got a lot of slides, so I'm kind of moving through them, but these were such good questions. Adam did, and by the way, um, oop, where am I going? Where am I going? Uh, Kevin also, Michael, thank you for the feedback there on Patreon. Adam, though, came in with a bunch of really good questions, so I'd just take a screenshot and we'd walk through them. Why use logging software instead of QRZ? And he's referring to QRZ, QRZ.com. Are you supposed to have one main log file or create separate log files for different events? So the answer is it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to just log directly into qrz.com, 
you can do that. I find that to be a bit tedious and takes a while to kind of deal with that, uh, but you can do that. The reason why you would have one main log file is to just keep it simple. You have all your logs on your application, one location, and then you could just back that up, for instance. There are other instances, like on my cell phone, which I have logging software for when I do soda activations or I'm just out doing a portable activation. That log I like to be separate from my main log. And then if I so desired, I would take that log on my phone, export it to a transportable file that's called an ADIF file, and then I could just import it into the, uh, the logging application that I'm using if I wanted to. Uh, let's see. What happens when you mess up an entry? Is it the end of the world? Will I be in trouble somehow? Uh, if you get it really bad, then it's a broken contact, and the party may send you a QSL card. You look at it and go, oh, I, this isn't what I remember the contact to be, or they may upload. Um, and anybody asking what apps I use on my phone and what apps I use on my computer, we'll get there, believe me, but I'm walking through some of the simple stuff, and, and we'll get to that. So stick with me. I promise I'm getting there. Um, so yeah, it would be a broken contact, which, you know, that's a bummer. See if you can get in touch with that person. See if you can fix the contact, maybe try to do a contact again. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what would happen there. Is there certain things that must be in a log entry? If I enter a contest, do I just put it in my QRZ log or do I have to send it somewhere? Uh, those are like three questions. So is there certain things that must be in a log entry? So generally you want to have, well, I'm going ahead of myself again. You want to have the standard parts, the date, the time, the frequency, the mode, the station worked, and the report. The report is nice because it gives you an idea of how far away you're making a contact because you figure out what their home QTH is, and you're like, hey, I was picked up at, a, at an S4 uh, with a signal strength of S7, or I'm sorry, tone quality of a four and a signal strength of seven. I was doing that on QRP. QRP. That's not bad, right? For instance. So yeah, try to try to make sure you have um, those parts to the QSO. If you enter a contest, do I just put it in my QRZ log? No. Um, I did a video on contesting too, and I talked about this. But in a contest, there's usually a special exchange. It's not just the call station that you worked and a signal report. It's also often what state you're in and the ARRL district that you're a part of. So I am in the LAX district, so I often give that as a part of my contact, um, the exchange, if you will. That is something that depends on the contest, and there are logging software specifically for certain types of contests. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So that makes it a bit easier, and we will talk about that a little bit too. Uh, these are questions I had or still have when it comes to logging. What should you do if you make a contact, regular or contest, and then after you realize you forgot to take down an important piece of information or if you accidentally copied down the wrong call? Again, it could be a broken call. You would need to figure that out. Um, yes, that's kind of the problem. You, you do want to be accurate and get as much of that information as you can. So what is the simplest way to log? And this goes back before computers, before the internet, and it's just on pieces of paper, right? I happen to have one of these little mini logs that the ARRL sells, and that's what you see a screenshot of. And it has everything in there, right? Like just what I said, date, time, frequency, mode, the station, that's the call sign, the report, the sent and received. So you're going to send 5-9, and they're going to send back 5-9. Um, maybe a little bit different, right? But in some cases, that's what it'll be. And then it could be a comment, like I was working uh, five watts QRP with a dipole in a park. Because sometimes QRP, that information, people are into that. And you can write that down. So the tablets are great. Pa pads of paper are great. They go with you everywhere. They're easy to pack. I often take a tablet of paper with me, even though I have my phone apps for logging. So, you know, keep that in mind. The cons, of course, is at some point, you want to get the contact off of that piece of paper and into a logging software or online. And that can be time consuming. So that's why I use my phone most of the time so that I can just type it in, click it, and I'm done. It makes it a lot easier. 
And of course, tablets, right? Their mortal enemy is getting wet. If you're outdoors, could be a problem. Uh, keep that in mind. I will throw a shout out here to uh, logbook tip. I carry a rocket book when I am in the field. This is not waterproof. It's not designed to be waterproof. But what it is, is a reusable notebook that uh, the pages, you can wipe them down with a wet cloth. It'll clean them. And it's all dotted with a QR code. And you can take a picture of this using the app, and it will digitize it and put it. Oh, it was a ghost notebook. Sorry. Um, it would digitize it and bring it into your phone or whatever so that you could have it in a text format, which is really nice, too, because then you have a backup copy. So that's kind of a high technology solution for an old idea. So before the Internet, right, we're still kind of in this before the Internet phase, you fill out and send QSL cards. That was the primary way of making a contact, right, or proving that you made a contact with another station. If you didn't get a QSL card back after you sent one, too bad. That was it. Um, that's a bummer. You can sometimes reach out to the person now that we have much easier ways to contact people. Reach out to them and say, hey, it'd be really nice if I could get a QSL card from you. Or, you know, I circled the please QSO or please QSL on the bottom of the card and, you know, I didn't get one back. Uh, often it's a very, if it's a very big station, a very popular station, it takes them a long time to work through all the QSL cards. So keep that in mind. And uh, a lot of people still to this day like to collect QSL cards, store them, display them, all that fun stuff. So the age of computers has changed logging um, substantially, and we're going to walk through a lot of that right now. So there's a whole host of logging applications. I've already kind of mentioned one of them. Ham Radio Deluxe HRD is very popular. N3 FJP, also popular. N1 MM, also popular. Log4 OM, Run log ng. That was the application that I use uh, on my Mac, and I like it. Some people don't like it. Logging software. I'll say this right up front. Uh, logging software. You're going to get very particular on which logging software you like, and you may not like other logging software at all. Some are better at some things, and some have quirks that some people like, and some people absolutely can't stand. Uh, Ham Radio Deluxe is probably the most full-featured logging software but you generally have to pay for the most current version of it. With Ham Radio Deluxe, which again, I, I've done a video on, I think the link is in the description. With that software, it will tie in things like computer control. Uh, it will try, you can even tie in rotor control for your radio so that, or your antenna, so that it'll actually go through and try and point your antenna to, to the station that you're trying to operate, which is extremely handy, but that all takes a lot of wherewithal and figuring out to make that work. So anyway. The advantages of a logger such as N3FJP, which is, again, what I use, is it creates a portable format, actually multiple portable formats, multiple types of formats, one of them, the primary one, being that ADIF file, A-D-I-F. And that can be sent, so when you're done with your contest, usually you have an email that you have to email your ADIF log to, and you just upload it as part of the email and it sends out and that was your submission to be in, entered into the contest so pretty simple that way hey k6uda is in the house i see him down there uh k6uda uses mac logger he's another big mac user so he likes mac logger that's good um so backing up your log is very easy if you're using a logger program almost any of them will have an ability to just open up the directory where your log is copy it and put it somewhere put it on a flash drive uh, put it on the cloud it doesn't matter you can put it wherever you want uh, you could just back it up directly using your backup software uh, linux logger i will talk about a linux logger in a second jay so actually i'm going to demonstrate one show you it real quick in the in what time is it Woo, we are <laughs> i look at the slides what slide i'm on and where I know I need to be and what demonstrations I want to do when I do shows like this. And I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> I am running out of time. I can already tell. So hopefully this doesn't run over too long, but likely we're going to be uh, hanging out for a little while. So appreciate you coming along with me. If you haven't already, please click the thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. All right. So the big thing, the thing I like to use uh, logging applications that are kind of Internet enabled is that they can gather information quickly on the contact that you're working. Their home QTH is extremely handy to have if you have a directional antenna. So often, when you start typing in the call sign, boom, it'll display it. Hey, this is so-and-so, possibly even put up their QRZ picture. 
what bearing they are from your station, and it will help you if you're having a hard time working that contact with them. So I really like that. I will demonstrate that as well as too. And you can sync between online systems, which we will talk about in a little bit. But basically, we're talking about uploading what's on your home log to something like QRZ or Logbook of the World. And then the ability to pull radio settings into the log automatically. This is very nice uh, feature if you have a radio that is connected to your computer. The logging, a lot of the logging softwares I mentioned above, they will actually query the radio and say, hey, what frequency are you on? What mode are you on? And then it'll just fill it out for you so you don't have to think about it. Really good feature, really important. So you've got all these logs or, or you're, you're connecting this stuff up. You've got an app like N3FJP. It's the app I'm the most familiar with. Um, I use it for a very specific reason that I'll talk about in a little bit. And so you want to get them online, and there's lots of options for that. QRZ.com is probably one of the biggest ones. Logbook of the World is uh, also one of the biggest. That's ran by the ARRL. You don't have to be a member of the ARRL to use Logbook of the World, but I believe you do for the awards. I believe it's something like that. Anyway, someone will correct me in the chat. I appreciate that. The uh, And then two other ones that um, I like. I like clublog.org a lot. Um, it has a lot of features, particularly if you want to chase DX or if you're looking for a de-expedition, you can show them right there, and that makes it really, really nice. Uh, less popular but still has a diehard following is eqsl.cc, and I'm actually just going to show you what these all look like right now so you have an idea. So, blibbity blam. So here is my uh, QRZ page, my QRZ log, actually. Um, right here. Oh, I think, did I, did it update? Yeah, I got uh, Continents of the World. I didn't know I had it. <laughs> anyway, so here's my log. And you can make multiple logs. I'm just looking at the, the one that's active right now. And I update, I upload from my home log on my computer to QRZ uh, via a certain means. But this is what it looks like. And if I wanted to, I could add a QSO, right? I can just click on this. Oh, yeah. Anyway, who's the first call sign I see? Anybody? Where'd the chat room go? No, oh, let's just do K6GDA. So we want to add a QSO. And there's the form fill out. So what band did we work? 40. What time is it? Now. Uh, what frequency? 40 meters. What did we use? FT8, right? So that's basically how that works. Uh, this is Logbook of the World. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Logbook of the World actually deserves its own um, it deserves its own video on setting this bad boy up because it's it's kind of a pain. This is eqsl.cc. It is a very interesting, very interesting looking, um, <laughs> very interesting looking website. The interesting thing about uh, eqsl, other than looking kind of like a GeoCities website, is that you can go to your inbox here, and we'll, okay, you get this. Um, another interesting page and you can just uh, click on any of these and you get a list of all your QSL your online QSLs and you just display them oh you can't see that huh here we'll do it this way so you just you can see them pop up like this and let's click this one hey here's another one this one's a little bland and where's this one hey that's a cool one W1 cam. Very nice. Okay, so you get the idea. And club log. Club log is also pretty straightforward. Um, I like it for the DX cluster. I just want to see all DXCCs, and it will tell you what everybody's working and who they've worked and how to get them. FT8, uh, CW. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? So you get the idea. Lots of different power through there. Good to good to do to work it that way. All right. <clears throat> and bring back my slides. Okay. Now EQSL.cc has got something going on with their security. 
I'm not sure how that's all going right now. I mention it for completeness, but I don't know their current situation. We're recording this in um, February 1st, 2020, so I, I don't know what's happening. I highly recommend the other three, though. All right, so you got your logs online. You got a home log. You got them kind of interconnected, which we'll, we'll talk about. What do you do? Well, as things have kind of uh, gone to being online or, or on your home computer, QSL cards like these have, have kind of become more of a novelty. Novelty doesn't mean less important uh, or bad in some way, but they are less important for proving that you made a contact. You can easily just do your contact on QRZ. You can easily just do it on Logbook of the World. But there are nets, there are groups of people that are um, kind of keeping it alive by having nets that are basically only for doing QSL contacts. Some of them have laxed a little bit, but the ones historically that come to mind are the Triple H net and the Omis net. Uh, they traditionally will basically want you to Q QSL between the two people that made a contact, which I think is great. If you want to do that, if that's how you enjoy your radio, as Callum would say, then go for it. It's very good. But they are on decline. <laughs> so by moving all everything online, we now have this kind of instant response to when you've worked a contact. If you have your station kind of squared away, you will be posting your contacts immediately or almost immediately to whatever the different websites are. And that's really nice for people that, um, like I say there, it's my contact and I want it now. Like, uh, anybody get that reference? It's my contact and I want it now. Post in the comments if you know what that's from. A little play on words, but if you ever watched uh, Maury in Noon because you're staying home sick, you might have um, seen this commercial and then I'm ref referencing. But anyway, a lot of people will say they upload to QRZ.com and, oh, Wonka's not bad, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Willy Wonka. J.G. Wentworth. There it is. Philip Muth got it. <laughs> J.G. Wentworth, man. Ugh. Uh, further, since the contacts exist online, the logging platforms like QRZ and LOTW perform another important function. So by getting these logs online, by having the two-party agreement, right, because it's a digitized, all these fields are, are pieces of information that can be compared. When you have a confirmed contact, everybody goes, yay, verily, yeah, these two people made a contact. Well, if you connect enough contacts together, collect enough of them in enough different directions or different um, regions, then you get another part of ham radio, which is, I did it all for the WAS, the worked all states, or awards. So back in the day, there were still awards for doing ham radio contacts, ham radio QSL, all that stuff. But with everything moving online and because you have this comparison check within the websites, it becomes really easy for things like QRZ.com, Logbook of the World to have these award systems. And I just showed you I got the All Continents Award, right? Um, so basically, that allows these websites to offer these awards. Something as simple as worked all states, right? Make a contact uh, from your home QTH to every state, and then upload that. And when they're confirmed by the other party, you get a con, you get the award for it. And I'll give you a little logo to put onto your um, <laughs> eight seven seven QRZ. Now that's funny. Um, you get a little logo that'll go on your QRZ page that says, yay, verily, you worked someone in all states. And there's all kinds of varying levels of this. That's why people do these loggings and uploading them, because there are different versions of worked all states, right? There's mixed mode, which is any band, any mode, work someone in all states, you get the award. Then there is ones for just single sideband, just CW, just 20 meters, just 10 meters, just 40 meters. So you get the idea. If you are new and starting out and are interested in chasing for awards, I recommend trying out FT8. Obviously, we use FT8 a lot on this channel. Uh, I have demonstrated FT8 a lot. But FT8 generally makes it pretty easy to uh, to go chase a lot of these, these awards, which is pretty nice. And um, I will... <laughs> that, last, that last little part in bold there. I... Um, I respect very much the people who were chasing awards before the internet 
and before we had the capabilities, the conveniences we have today. So my hat is off to you fine people who did that in the past. So what logger do I use? I've already mentioned it, but I use N3FJP on Windows. Uh, I say pay once, cry once, because you can buy them individually, and they make loggers for like every contest and the specific exchanges, right? Like your uh, ARRL division, what you're in, whatever it is for that particular contact, they sort it, or uh, contest, they sort it all out for you. You just run that particular, um, somebody's posting a phone number, and that's not good. <laughs> they post that particular um, field so that you know exactly what you're doing, and it tells you what states you've worked, all that stuff. But the regular logger, just for the standard logger, is, is totally usable. It's very Spartan in design, which kind of appeals to me. Um, I'll show you what it looks like really quickly, and uh, more to come on that. But let me let me flip this over and show you. So this is what it looks like. Uh, I have been on a rash of of FT8. These are all the contacts from today. Look at all these contacts from just today. Here, um, to here, all today on FT8. Uh, Twenty's been good to me. Um, I also use. The iPhone app, which I'll show you right now. So let me flip that over. See if this works. Okay, good. So this is a uh, ham log, all one word on iOS. Uh, somebody will post uh, likely what people use for Android, but I use this. And pretty simple, you click the plus button on the top and you get a Oh, apparently I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to work this guy yesterday on, on 20 meters with a, an experimental antenna that I've been testing. It didn't work, but I preloaded all the fields. And so if you go in here and, you know, we'll use K6UDA again, K6UDA, and you hit look up if you've got an internet connection, well, there you go, Robert. Yeah, we know that guy. He wasn't activating that, though. That was in notes that, um, anyway, you get the idea. And so then you can save this, and if you wanted to, you could export it. So under tools, that is a lot of options. Um, import a ADIF or export log entries. And it'll give you the options for how you want to export it. Is it an ADIF uh, in an email? Is it a CSV file? Is it a SODA CSV? Is it an eqsl.cc? All right, so lots of options there. Pretty good app. Uh, let's see. Now, the other one I'll, I'll show you really quickly, too. Let's see if I still have that connected. I do. All right, let's back to the back to my display. So this is my uh, Raspberry Pi right here. Uh, and I'm running Xlog. Xlog. Or I was running it. Where is it? There it is. Same idea. I can say date is to the second because it's UTC. Um, UT, click the UTC button, it'll update. Now keep in mind, you may have to type this in if you don't have internet connection. The call, again, we're gonna, K6UDA, I'm gonna give him a hard time. Uh, we worked on 40, and our contact was on single sideband, right? And I gave him a 5.9, you get the idea, 5.9. And yeah, so if you save this, it would get added to the log, and you could then, if you wanted to, export out the log and you could have an ADIF file or a Cabrillo, uh, an ED1, or a TSV, depending on what you need. I really only play with ADIF, so that's kind of how that works. And yes, I have the chat room turned off if you notice that, but I have that turned off on this view because we're going to likely need the space in a second here. <laughs> Don asked, did the lawn chairs fall off? I took them off immediately after making that video. I will push the envelope, but I am no fool. Uh, also, the other thing that I use a lot, and it's I, I wouldn't call it so much a log, more as a, a helper app. And what happened to my WSJTX? Oh, that's weird. We're going to have to reset that. I use this guy down here, this JT Alert um, application. This JT Alert application, do we now have audio? There we go, we got audio again. Uh, this JT Alert application basically will take uh, the things that it sees going on on WSJTX and it will port it over to my log program, which I'll demonstrate this later. Yeah, there's still a lot of 20 going on. 
By the way, if there's anyone in Delaware, uh, I need Delaware. Send me a message on Discord so I can get that contact for you. I need to lock that down so I can be done with it. Um, all right. So those are just a couple examples. I'll show you how to uh, upload to LOTW and QRZ on N3FJP in a second. So making it all chooch. Here's where the rubber meets the road. You got a logger in your home computer. You've been logging contacts. And you want to let the world know about those contacts that you made. You need to get your logs online. So you've logged to QSO. The easiest, the easiest ones I've found to upload to is Club Log, super easy. EQSL, surprisingly very easy. Um, auto upload to Logbook of the World is easy once you have passed the ridiculous configuration setup for that thing. Oh, I missed a uh, super chat. Uh, Matthew Wolf, passed my tech this morning. Thank you for all you do for the hobby. Hey, Matthew, thank you for getting licensed. You are contributing to keeping ham radio going. And, you know, spread the word, man. Get people out there. Get on the air. I, I'm, I'm glad you made it. But the work is not over. <laughs> it's just getting started. Get out there. Have fun, of course. But, man. Uh, and now you're discussing this. Should have waited. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I miss something, Matt? Sorry. I will not be doing logs for old men. I don't use it, but I do have, an, like I said, I do have another video for uh, Hamlog, I'm sorry, Ham Radio DX or Ham Radio Deluxe and N3FJP. I go into larger detail. Chuck Taylor uh, noticed my reference. I think it's hard to not notice the reference to AD, uh, AVE there. Big fan of his stuff. So Logbook of the World is probably the most time consuming and getting set up. Like I said, that deserves its own video. There are guides, written guides online. If you want to get Logbook of the World set up, um, take your time. Don't get too stressed out. Oh, did I miss some more Super Chats? I'm sorry. I had the log down. Oh, uh, Matt Trulin. No, I got it. I got it. I got it all, didn't I? Anyway, thank you, everybody. And then QRZ is kind of a funky thing because QRZ... Um, well, it's weird. The log just updated or the, my streams, my streams flipping out. Yeah, I said that Matthew Wolf. I got it. You heard me, right? <laughs> Matthew, thank you very much. I said you passed tech. That's great. But the, the work is not over. You must go forth and, uh, and get, and keep spreading the good word on ham radio. Of course, have fun, but keep doing it. And Bob, Bob, thank you very much. Only took me a decade to get my extra. I guess it took me a decade to get mine too. I hadn't really tried, but it was a decade since I first got licensed to getting my extra. So no worries. It's not a race. It's a, well, it is a race, but it's a marathon. You got time, plenty of time. So QRZ.com, in fact, I'll show it to you, is um, a bit interesting. I will... Go back to QRZ here. So I'm not going to show you all my passwords and stuff like that, but um, you can download from LOTW. And it asks you for a password. And you have to set that up. Is right here. Download only. You can upload to, um, QR, uh, to Logbook of the World, but you can download. So once you have that set up and you, again, type in your password, it won't store the password it only uses it for one time authentication so every time you do this you'd have to redo it it'll then ingest logbook of the world and you pull that into qrz which is exactly what i do josh delishment delishment i hope that's right thanks for teaching this stuff thank you very much for watching i appreciate it i upload from qrz to logbook of the world oh edwin okay so that's the other thing is i believe you have to be a subscriber you can upload to Logbook of the World from QRZ. You do, but you have to be a certain level of subscriber to be able to do that. Anyway, um, for those of you that... Oh, d -lash mitt Thank you, Josh. d -lash mitt Ah, there you go. XML sub. Yeah. So Edwin says, yes, you have to be an XML subscriber to QRZ. I knew there was a special delineation in there. Um, I have been doing... 
Um, I have been, I'm a subscriber, but I'm not an XML subscriber. So I don't go straight to QRZ. I go through Logbook of the World. This is my workflow. All right, so kind of this is going to walk through my whole process. How do I interface with digital apps or my radio or my what have you? Um, so the first step is obviously you're going to have to connect your radio to the computer. You have to have that connection to make any of this stuff work. Once you have that, though, uh, there are plenty of settings in your different logging applications like N3FJP, which I will show you right now, that will pull in details from your radio. If you go to settings, setup, wrong one, settings, rig interface. So you're going to get something like this. All, there we go. You're, all of the standard, um, I have none selected right now because I'm using uh, JT Alert, but all of your standard apps are going to have something like this. They're going to have a selection for, you know, your ICOM. Um, I come to I come one and then you got to go in here and go okay I know it's 9.6 K baud eight data bits one stop bit and then you got to do this whole song and dance to get it connected much like you would do with WSJTX which I just rather let JT uh, no I just rather let JT alert and WSJTX do it with that said to make that work to make that work there is something you have to do and it is settings, where is it, API. So I have TCP API enabled as a server running on my computer. And that allows JT Alert to connect to the logging software that's running as a server to basically push it contact details. So that's the big thing there. And if I do that correctly, uh, I am going to get on FT8 right now so you can see how it works. We'll, we'll, we'll do it live. Uh, this looks like a clear spot. I'll do a tune really quick. So if anybody wants to try and contact me, now would be a good time. Good, good. We'll see if this works. If it doesn't work, we'll just go back to the slides. But I'd like to show you what it looks like when I log. So... If someone hears me and they begin to reply here, the JT alert is going to push um, is going to push that data to my logger, and then my logger will query QRZ and will display information about that user to my screen in case I need to move my antenna. Oh no. Did I screw up? Oh, my API key is showing. Well, maybe nobody's, maybe 20 is not good right now. Is it getting dark? It's very dark. We'll see. I've been uh, spying on Delaware here. Let's see if I'm making it out. I might not be. Yeah, there we go. A little bit. 20's dead. Yeah, 20 is way dead. Oh, why don't I go to 40? Hold on. Hang on. <laughs> Let's turn the stop. Oh, wait, there we go. All right, good. This might work. All right, so let me show you the log. So we're starting to get information. So K9BFG is the current person I'm trying to work a contact with. I'll get my head out of the way. Nope, that's not it. There it is. And so he's in Nathan Boone in Indiana, K9BFG. We've worked before. So already it's populating this data for us, making this whole process so much easier. So it looks like we can't complete the contact. So let me flip over to 40. I'm going to stop. Sorry, Nathan. Uh, you should have switched over, buddy. Uh, 
Oh, that's why, because it's trying to run split. Uh, why don't you switch over when I do split? Maybe. There we go. All right, sorry about that. Let's see if that improves anything. All right, we're definitely cooking now. All right, so we're transmitting on 40 meters, so if anybody can pick me up on 40, we'll show it what it looks like to work in contact with you. And so that contact, I had a broken contact back here with BFG. Oh, we lost. We'll just escape out of it. Sorry, BFG. See if you can get on uh, 40. And I will use my handy PSK reporter. Uh, that's a website. And there's 40. So I'm, I'm getting out on 40. We'll see if... Um... Not great, though. Uh, let's see. Is there a separate program than the logging software? I know. Dumb question. Um, yeah, so I am running. Get my face back here. So I am running uh, W3 or uh, yeah, WSJTX, which is running my um, my digital mode. And as I work a contact here, so there we go. KN4 QRP. So there you go. Hey, there is his actual image on QRZ. So we've got Dave Gibson. We are, oh, the frequency's wrong. Hopefully that'll update in a second. Uh, we are working an FT8 contact. It says 20, but I have faith that the software works. <laughs> uh, we will see. Let's see if he gets this. Uh... So WSJTX has a built-in logger. And that's great because then you won't lose a contact if something gets messed up along the line. Um, but to get it out of there and online, oh, we lost them. To get it out of there and get it online, you'd have to take that file by yourself and, and upload it. By connecting it to my, my main computer logger, the main computer logger knows to upload to Logbook of the World, QRZ through Logbook of the World, uh, Club Log, and now EQSL which I'm going to show you here shortly. I'm spending too much time on this. You get the idea. Oh, good. Okay, so we completed the contact. So FT8 pulls up. This is WSJTX. FT8, 40 meters. Um, I received a negative 21, so I'm glad we can make that work. And transmit power is 30, and we hit OK. So watch the, watch the background. Boom. And there you go. It's ORP. Sorry, ORP. And it filled in the dates correct or the information correctly. So I didn't have to do any of that. It just took care of it for me. So that's why I use it. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, so we can leave that alone for now. <clears throat> All right, so in my case, what you just saw, I went from WSJTS to JT Alert, which is the helper application. And there are other ways to make this work, but this is just my workflow into N3FJP, and then that uploads to the internet. And now people are starting to contact me. <laughs> so how do I transfer files to LOTW from other logging software? Great question. We'll walk through that too. So back to the display. 
So now I've got all my logs and let's say I want to upload them. So I will go to, where was it? E-logs, L-O-T-W. So I can set this up to enable real-time upload. When uploaded, the QSO login from AC's main log will log immediately to be uploaded to LTW whenever you press the enter key on the contact. So if you entered a wrong contact and you hit enter, right, it's going to upload that thing. So I don't leave it on. Um, I do leave club log on, though. So basically, you've got a couple of options, um, and you can do all contacts not uploaded, blah, 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 and then you do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to go through the password stuff. Uh, with you the password verification but you get the idea uh, for club log same thing it's gonna ask you uh, you do an upload you click all contacts not uploaded and EQSL same deal call sign whatever you're using and you can make it real time but you may not want to and that's it. That's what it does. Once you get it into this logger, you have all kinds of control. You can do it semi-manually like I do, like just upload everything I haven't uploaded already. Boom, it'll go figure it out. Um, or you can have it update the second you hit enter. Which could be good and bad. Your choice. If you're highly, if you highly trust, uh, if you highly trust your capabilities to log, um, that would be a way to go. Oh, is that it? <laughs> is that my last one? Oh, that is my last one. Okay, good. Wow. We we uh we did it. <laughs> I'll turn on the call uh the call ins if anybody wants to call in. I didn't warn anybody about this, but um so I'll check the chat here. Let me go back to me for a little bit. something like that. So that's basically my workflow for logging. That's kind of logging in a nutshell. If you want a deeper dive on some of the applications, like I said, you can go check the uh, video I did below for QSL cards, for logging applications, the whole nine yards. I uh, want to make, do a QSO call-in. A QSO call-in. How would I do? I don't know, man. I don't know what that is. So we'll put that in there. We'll get that chat box in. Oh, cool. We've got the funky chat box. I'll go with it. WSJTX is back. We'll run some WSJTX right now. While monitoring the... Uh... Uh, ever use Echo Ham on Mac with a 4G hotspot? I have not. So I'm calling CQ again. Oh man, 86 Den uh, 86 DM Dennis says all this time he's been. Oh, we got a caller. Has been like logging each one individually. Oh man, that's part of the reason why I do this. I I don't wanna I don't wanna do that. All right, hang on, caller. I'm gonna find you. That is a uh, not the right website. Is it Kim? How you doing? It is. Hey, I'm doing good, Josh. How are you? Good, and, good. Um, I'm wondering particularly about Raspberry Pi because I'm trying to set up a field station in a box. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I would like to also be with other people out in the field and i feel pretty good about establishing Wi-Fi networking out there. I'm just wondering, is there anything, uh, two questions. One, is there anything on Raspberry Pi that does the internet upload? Does Xlog do that? And two, is there anything on Raspberry Pi that if you were all on a network out in the field that you could uh, log to a central uh, computer like Field day, for example. Oh, okay. So that's those are two really good questions. So let's check the first one first, I guess. Uh, let's see if we can. So I'm on this uh, X log right now. Let me get that on the screen so you can see it. We can click that content. I don't think we did. Um, so log. Dupe check. I don't know that you can. 
So you can export it, but then you're going to do some manual stuff, and that's no fun, right? Work before now. All right. No, I don't think this does. So for me, it's fine because I'm out where there's no, no internet. But I see what you're asking. You're asking about if you had a populated log, kind of like what I do with my M3FJP, how do you automatically log up to the internet from that? That would be a handy, a handy thing to do. Um, that is a good question. I'll have to take that offline and see if I can, I can find an answer for you. Oh, did I finish the contact? Sorry, double click that. I don't know if that helps, Kim. Well, it doesn't help because I didn't get your, the answer you're looking for, but I understand your question. Let's see if the chat Great. is more help. They might know better. What is Great. an internet, uh, quote unquote, up, uh, 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 an app on Raspberry Pi that will upload to QRZ, for example? Yep, that would be neat. Too much micromanagement. I'll stick with paper and pencil. Yeah. Forget your life. Absolutely. That's what uh, Good Game Ham Radio Bees and Outdoors said, too. Yeah, if that's your your thing, then all right. You know, do what you like. Do what you're comfortable with. This is like, so this is something once you get this set up, you don't have to futz around with it very much, which is why I like it. You you do the setup. You do have to spend some time up front. Um, but, yeah, I think somebody's on top of me on FT8. But once you get the work done in setting it up, then you're good. It should work. Uh, cycle camp. Yes. Do the tools produce files for contest log submissions? They do. Oh, Kim. Sorry. Kim took off. Thank you, Kim, for calling in. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's logging, how I log. If you have comments or questions, post them in the description. If you're looking for something more specific and walking through the different features of the actual applications, like I said, the link is in the description for um, an older video I did on the logging software that you may want to use. I use N3FJP. It's simple. It does the interconnecting that I want it to do, and that's it. Uh, somebody is in. Oh, yeah. Ha, ha, there it is. BJU. Trying to make it work. I think I've got a bad frequency picked. I'm going to I'm going to hop over here. All right, but before I do that, we're going to go to uh Patreon, say my thank yous to the patrons who really are the reason this episode was selected. And uh then we're going to go off to Discord. So I hope you're I hope you're ready for that and you're going to follow along. I'm going to move over this way. Slide over a couple frequencies and try to call you back. BJU. All right, but before I wrap things up, Big thank yous, big thank yous, big thank yous to Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Evan Hartman, admin extraordinaire, Matt Fields, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, 86 DM Dennis, who's in the chat. Thanks for coming out. The Wyoming Ham, I didn't see him. I don't think he was in, but sorry we missed you, buddy, if you were. Uh, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, Michael Hunt, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, Ur Dragetchevich, Dragetchevich, Ur Draget, Draget, Dragetchevich. I believe I got that right. I had to say it three times. Rob Zerge, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K. Eight, uh, BCR Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve, Steve, Stevie. I think that's wrong. I think it's Steve Barker. Stevie Barker. Apologize. I'll fix it. Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Connor Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Hearley, Harald Carpenter, The Brew Crew. I did almost get through the whole beer. Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, Stephen Carduz, Richard Smith, Hercules Casey One, LZR, my, or John Flowers, Stephen Blanford, Tom Wright, Bill McCarty, Good Game Ham Radio, uh, David Gerald, Simon Deards, Ni uh, Nicholas Dubay, Michael Ifredo or E, I did the same thing last time. Sorry, Michael, or Mike Ifredo, Jason, Jace Ravenfield, and Masi Muddy. 
All right, everybody. I'm heading over to the Discord in a little bit. I will talk to you when I, or when I get there. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you could. Comment below if you have any further questions. Maybe I'll just make a quick little standalone video to walk through some of the things as far as settings go. And if you like this, hit subscribe. I stream every Saturday now, 5 p.m. We've got to come up with a fancy name for all the amateur radio uh, shows that are now on Saturdays because you got Dave, you got Callum, and you got me at 5 o'clock to run out the round out the evening for you. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.